is a mess. It's got stuff all over the place. I've got my pictures here, you know, kind of crucified with Christ, you know, it reminds me that, hey, you know, that's the way I should be. i got to put myself back up on that cross to tell you something. Because I need it. I need to be reminded to put myself back up on the cross. You know, and I've got my, my handy-dandy vice, you know, because sometimes I need to be squeezed, you know, I need to be held in place. So I've got a vice, you know, to remind me of that. So sometimes I use the vice, sometimes I use the cross. All kinds of like visual memory techniques, you know, to remind me of what I need to do. Because my life, I don't know about you, but my life's a mess. <laughs> so I have to discipline my life. I have to put kind of like cleanup detail in my life. Because I have to clean up my mess. Don't you? I mean, do you hire a maid or something? Spiritually? I kind of have to, you know, take measure of who I am. Take a measurement of what I am. Kind of measure where I am and where I'm going. You know, kind of like for one end of the measurement, to the other, I need to figure that one out because I want to measure up to what God has in store for me. Because if I don't, I won't. And I'll wind up like really in the dark. And if I'm in the dark too long, I might wind up kind of like becoming, ooh, vessel of wrath. <laughs> but I'd rather be a vessel of honor. You know, one of those people that Jesus says, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into your rest. So because he says, Enter into your rest, I figure that means right now I need to clean up my eye. I need to get it together. I need to open up his word, you know, the Bible, and read it. I need to read it and live it. I need to learn it and do it. I need to understand it and relate to it. Jesus, as he speaks to me of what I need to do in my life. Now, maybe your life's a little different. Maybe you don't have any messes in your life. You know, it seems like everywhere I turn right now, my life's a mess. <laughs> but I'm glad that, in a way, it is, because I kind of get a chance to clean it up, you know, at least before someone else does it for me. You know, it's a little embarrassing when someone comes over to your house, you know, and your house is a mess, and you invite them in, and they go, Ew, what's that smell? Ew, yeah, I can tell how you've been living. Ooh, look at that. Wow, where where can I sit down? Well, here, let me clean up my mess first, you know, so that you can, I'll, I'll, I'll move the trash out of the way, I'll move the clothes out of the way, I'll move this, that, and the other thing, you know, so you have one little place to sit down. And that's okay, you know, I, I think I'll come visit you later when you get your act together, because right now, you have no room for me. Is that how Jesus sees your life? Is that what your life is like? A mess, and you have no room for God at all? Because you think you got it in order. You know, oh yeah, I've really got it under control. You know, I got my smartphone. <laughs> yeah, guess what? <laughs> battery goes dead. What happens? Well, yeah, I'll replace the battery. Okay, you drop in the toilet. What happens? Well, I'll go get a new smartphone. I went all the contacts. Okay, I see you've got your life in control. Right. Spiritually, what are you going to do? Do you have a smart spirit phone, you know, to take care of your life? Or do you need to kind of like get smart and learn to spiritually take care of your life so that practically you're living out the life that God wants you to have by cleaning up your messes? Because after all, looks pretty dirty to me, just like this table. Man, as a matter of fact, even while I was talking to you, I managed to clean it up enough to have a devotional to change my feelings and my emotions to something more devoted to God. 
to realizing, hey, even when I'm taking care of someone else and what they're going through, I'm taking care of myself and what I'm going through. Huh. Imagine that. Sounds like God has a plan. The path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. But not as though I had already attained, either was already perfect, but I follow after that I may apprehend that for which I also am apprehended. I go get what's got me. I go pursue what's pursuing me. I go grab hold of what's grabbed hold of me. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. I can know Jesus. I can go onward and inward and outward and allwards and afterwards be able to say, I knew you. Not, I never knew you, but I know you. Oh, so we have to follow on to know Jesus. We have to follow on to know the Lord. We have to keep going forward, not going backwards. I think God has a light that we should be going forward to follow that direction He's chosen for us to go. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their Father. What? Is that in the Bible? Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Imagine that. You shining forth as a sun in the kingdom of your father. You're in a kingdom. Ooh, I am. Yeah, you know, you're not in a democracy. Ah, get rid of all that. You're not in the world. Yeah, get rid of all that. You're a citizen of heaven. You're in the kingdom of God. You're in the kingdom of heaven come to earth. You are a member in particular of an election that you've been given to make sure your calling that you would be always known as a light and a son in the righteousness of their father in the kingdom of God. Wow. That's me? Yep. Clean up your mess. Guess who's coming? We all, with open face, beholding as in the glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as the Spirit of the Lord, by that Spirit of God who dwells within us. So, you mean that I don't have a maid service? I have a spirit service? And he's cleaning up my act on the inside? But do I have to do anything? Oh, what do I got to do? Clean up the outside. What? You know, like, do the yard work. The yard work? Well, what do you mean? Well, you see, if you're a temple of Holy Spirit, you know, and you don't put, like, you know, some kind of protection barrier outside, then the ants are going to come inside. You know, all the little buggies, you know, spiders will come in, you know, through the little cracks and crevices that you've kind of, like, opened up. You know, little, like, you know, kind of, like, cockroaches are going to come from in the garden, you know, into your house, you know, and kind of like take up residence. You know, they're going to get inside, you know, and you don't want cockroaches because as soon as God flicks the light on, he'll say, oh, ooh, wow, what, what did you, did you forget to spray this room? You know, like, you know, disinfect and clean and, you know, eliminate because you got cockroaches in your life? Wow, you know, we got to kill them. Kill them. <laughs> Splink. Because, you know, with a cockroach, <laughs> if you don't kill them all, they breed like crazy. So, you got cockroaches in your life? Turn on the light. Then you'll be able to see if you have roaches, spiders, ants, buggies invading your life, your temple of the Holy Spirit that you are. Turn on the light as He is in the light. When that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. 
Now I know in part, but then I shall know even as I also am known. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath his hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. Purify? You mean like, like you know, that oil I've heard, that olive oil that's, you know, like been beaten seven times, you know, that they keep purifying it until they get all the sediment out of it. Yeah. You know, like a Brita filter, running it through over and over and over again, you know, filtering the water so that it's pure. Yeah. You know, like not drinking dirty water anymore. Yeah. But drinking pure water. Yeah, you know, like reading the Bible. You know, it's kind of like if you read it for yourself, if you let it speak to you personally, if you ask God to teach you individually, it's kind of like pure Word of God. Wow. Pure. You mean, all I gotta do is read it? All I gotta do is like live it? All I gotta do is do it? Whatever it says to you, that you should do. That's why we call it the pure Word of God. Because, frankly, if God can't teach you, then God's not very big God, is He? If God can't lead you, then He's not really much of a God, is He? If God, by His Spirit, can't inspire you, I'm not so sure I'd want to follow that kind of God. But because God can inspire you, because God can lead you, because God can teach you, I kind of like that kind of God. Because He's making me light, shining in the darkness. And boy, can I tell you, the darkness is all around. Isn't it time you cleaned up your act? purified yourself, kind of like got rid of the dirt in your life.